We are here at Taste of the Danforth in Toronto, Canada's largest street festival, and it's pretty easy to see why. After 22 years, the impact of this festival can be felt across the city, as well as in several industries, especially hospitality, tourism, and the culinary arts. So we're going to go down to the street to find out how it's made. Howard Taste of the Danforth, Canada's biggest street festival. We were hoping to get some insight on how this beast of a festival is actually made. Um, what kind of preparation goes into preparing for this every year? As soon as the festival's over, we start again. So it begins right away. Uh, so actually the festival's not over when it's over because there's lots of reporting we have to do. If it's Guinness World Records, we gotta do Guinness World Records. If it's a studio, we gotta re do reports for them. The government gets us a grant, you gotta do reports from them. So there's a whole reporting process. The, the end is not the end because you're preparing for the future and it sort of follows a natural evolution. So Lillian, tell me, with a festival this size, how much planning goes into something like this? My team and I started, uh, our interns um, started and we did uh, from May until now, um, three months of planning. So uh, to pull this all together, but good thing is that uh, for events like these, the structure's there already, so it's just uh, filling in the blanks for uh, different new stuff. All right, Mayor Tori, in terms of sort of uh, local tourism and hospitality, how great is that for the city? Well, what you like to hope happens is not only do people have a good time, yeah. but from the standpoint of this area of the Danforth, that they sort of sample some of this food, see some of these restaurants they might not have seen before, and they come back. And so all of these different street festivals are meant to be fun, but there is a business purpose behind them too, which the merchants will say they do produce more business for them. Taste of the Danforth is such a big event, it's so popular. Um, when you're planning something like this, what goes into that? How do you, how do you get this off the ground the way you want it? Um, the first thing we come up with is an idea of what we're going to do. Um, and then we kind of forecast of what we're going to uh, produce, how much we want to sell, and then we go from there. We're expecting a couple thousand people. Oh yeah. Alright, so we're planning at least uh, between uh, 1,000 and 1,300 uh, portions a day. Wow. Every one of those waffles is two portions, uh, 1,500 waffles. Anastasia's now working, started working on her uh, ice cream uh, cookies. If that wasn't enough, we, uh, we're doing the opening for the Taste of Danforth tonight. So we got uh, between two and 300 people coming here. Apparently the, apparently the Premier is going to be here, uh, the Mayor of Toronto is going to be here, and the uh, Chief of Police is going to be here. If that wasn't stressful enough, I got all the media with them behind that. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I've got uh, 12 interns that are on the street and they're running the festival. I can talk to you because they're out there. That sounds like an incredible experience. So Centennial students are welcome to come out. Absolutely unequivocally. We would welcome them because you guys have been trained in this. You know, for our students aspiring chefs coming up, what would be the best advice that you could give them when sort of attacking an event like this? Take what you learn at school. Because um, I know when I went to school, it was uh, part of the uh, curriculum was uh, management. Um, figuring out what the breakdown is, following the breakdown, and then, you know, knowing exactly what you have to learn. For more information on Centennial College's School of Hospitality, Tourism, and Culinary Arts, make sure to check out our website at centennialcollege.ca. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Centennial Today and on Instagram at Centennial College.